Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Okay, guys, if you, if you look at the previous videos on this car, it is basically flawless under here. Now, I mean, you know, all the zinc plating is still on all the nuts and bolts. It's, it's incredible. It's the nicest 126 I've ever seen. However, that still does not stop the ball joint boots from deteriorating after, you know, 35, 40 years. How many, how old was this one? 38 years, something like that. See how the boot has just deteriorated and the grease is coming out. And this one has started to split too. So we're going to put in some new ball joints. Okay, what Kevin has done is disconnected. This is the tie rod uh, mounting arm. You see there's two bolts there. And now on, on the back side of the brakes, he's moving the 19 millimeter. And then we can just pull those brakes off. Now these brakes, I have the service records where they've actually been rebuilt and yeah, resealed. This looks brand new. It looks brand new, yeah. And it, there's new brake hoses too. So we don't even have to do the brakes on this car. All right, guys, I'm on the other side of the car. Kevin is over here uh, removing the three little Allens to remove the dust shield. And we already have the... Uh, so we noticed that there's new wheel bearings and seals. Um, the rotors are also new. And the brakes have been rebuilt with new brake pads and new brake hoses. All of this has been done. And look at that, guys. That's remarkable. All the factory markings. Yeah. Have you ever seen a 126 this clean? No. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, look at the look at the condition of the bushings up there. They're they're like perfect. Yeah, look down here. Look at these, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Well, those that's I crazy. Mean, the 126 uh, lower control arms. Those never ever go bad. The, yeah, these are way better than the 123 lower bushings. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so now that that shields off. Kevin can crack this loose and then we can get access to take out the ball joint uh, nut here uh, and we can get this off the car and press in another ball joint. Okay, uh, I'm over on the passenger side here and we've used our ball joint separator. This is really for tie, tie rods and we've separated right up here so you can see our steering knuckle is detached. And now I have a ball joint separator right here. And you can see we have that, that little spike kind of goes onto the top of the ball joint. And then we tighten that down and it's going to push the steering knuckle out of the lower control arm. All right, Kevin's over on the other side, removing the uh, steering knuckle. You can see I've got the ball joint out here. Uh, we just pulled it out of the lower control arm. So now let's go knock this ball joint out. All right, so Kevin's over here at the parts washer. He's cleaning up the driver's side uh, steering knuckle and dust shield because we're going to repaint those, the uh, semi-gloss black. And you can see we've already knocked the ball joint out of this one over here. And I'm over here at the uh, vise. And you can see I've started knocking out this ball joint. Just wanted to show you guys the process. We stick a big steel slug there, hit it with a five-pound hammer. All right, and I say this in all my videos, guys, um, do not hold the steel slug because if you hold it and you hit that, if it goes through, it's going to take your hand with it through that ball joint hole and it'll mess you up. Ask me how I know. So, so basically you put the slug there and you just keep hitting it and it's about to come out. There we go. And there are the, there's the old original ball joint. You see the grease was still in there, but the boot was gone. And look how floppy that is. That's uh, what happens when you lose your uh, boot. They just slowly wear out very quick. Well, I'm sorry. They wear out very quickly, not slowly. All right. We're out here at my high tech paint booth, which is the hood of a 126 parts car. And uh, I'm just going to dry these off and do one last clean with some acetone, and then we'll go ahead and respray them. Acetone will remove any grease or like uh, residual parts washer fluid. All right, here we are over at the press. And we're gonna get our spindle right there. 
Now I'm going to press the ball joint in before we paint it because once we paint it, we won't be able to touch it for a little while. And we have our limb forder ball joints. Set that down here. And we're just going to put our ball joint right there. There we go. Now there's a little cup that goes underneath here, right like that. And this tool, see how it has a cutout? So that cutout allows it to fit around the steering knuckle. And the steering knuckle can go up inside the cutout. And we're just going to go ahead and press this in. And there we go. Now let me zoom in and you can see the knurl right right there. You can see those little the little knurls here. They're like little teeth. We're going to press those in there. And that's it, guys. You have a perfectly pressed in ball joint. See how it's smooth and level all around the bottom? That's how you press in the ball joint. Now, let's get these things painted and looking nice again. All right, guys. This is the freshly painted spindle. Looks way nicer. Back to the factory semi gloss black. And got the ball joint in there. Now I'm just going to put a jack right underneath here. And I'm going to put a little pressure on the bottom of this uh, ball joint so I can then tighten the nut. Okay, I've got that ball joint nut tightened down. There's our new boot. See the jack is under here. I've lowered the car into the jack so I can get the nut and start tightening that down. And uh, look here, you can see the new brake hardware here where it was rebuilt, the caliper was rebuilt. That's what I saw in the service records. You can see the brand new pads on here. So that's awesome. I don't need to do new calipers. You can also see how that hose is brand new. All right, let's go ahead, get this tightened down, then we'll knock out the other side and start reassembly. Okay, here we are over on the driver's side, and you can see our brand new beautiful ball joint in there. So let's uh, lower the car down and reinstall the dust shield, the rotor and hub, and the caliper, and put our spindle nut on, and we are done. All right, now we're just gonna put our uh, dust shield back on. And Mercedes wants you to put a little blue Loctite on these uh, small bolts that go back in there. All right, now we'll go ahead and put the rest of them in and then slide on our rotor and hub. And I went ahead and put some fresh grease on that outer bearing. All right, wipe off some of our grease there. And then we'll put our spindle nut back on here. And we want to tighten this down until we just remove the play. Okay, I've tightened down the spindle nut until there's no more slot or play in the hub. There we go. And we're going to set our lock nut now and then put our dust cover back on and reattach our caliper. Now Mercedes does want a little grease here in the end, so we're gonna put a little grease in the cap before we put it on there. Put some grease on the end here, or in our dust cap, and we're just gonna tap this guy back on here. There we go. Yeah, uh, this is a new rotor. The reason you know it's new, guys, it still has the protective silver coating from the factory. Normally, an entire rotor is covered with that, but it wears off in like the first, you know, five miles of driving. But it still has all that coating right here. All right, guys, all back together. Look how beautiful this car is. This is the nicest 300 SD I've ever seen.